Well, our international affairs editor, Raghi Omar, in your assessment, uh, what does Putin want? He wants to swallow Ukraine and, in doing so, remake the security architecture of Europe in which NATO is not paramount but Russia is. Mm. That's the big picture. In the immediate, on the ground, um, with 150-odd thousand troops there, the aim is to spread panic amongst the civilian population, to take over key assets and bases, to from which to launch attacks, but in the meanwhile to degrade Ukraine's ability to govern itself to such an extent to make sure the banks don't work, the fuel depots don't work, that people flee the cities, that somehow either Ukraine surrenders or that there is such chaos that he is able to impose what is effectively a puppet regime to govern. He does not want to go to the full extent of a all-out invasion, but he may find himself doing that. So what do you think happens next? I think that Ukraine, its all indicators are that they will resist. To what extent, we don't know. But Ukraine voted for democracy and uh, independence in 2014. There's nothing to suggest they won't want that now. That will then change the entire strategic picture for Vladimir Putin, because then he has to take over a huge country, the biggest in Europe, where people will fight. Now, look at our experience in Iraq. At the height of our presence in Iraq with US-led soldiers, there were 600,000 troops before we could say we even pacified Iraq. That is the nightmare scenario. It'll be a short-term victory. I don't see how Ukraine is able to resist a full-on onslaught, but in the long term, it's devastating for Russia.